So I'm here to talk to you about an existential risk to the future of the Republic and how Hadrian is trying to solve it. So a little bit of a scary topic, but part of my job is to point to problems and then say, don't worry, the Avengers are going to fix it. So um, basically, if you think about the space industry, the defense industry, and the semiconductor industry, all of the primes, whether it's new primes like SpaceX, Astronus, Andril, or Lockheed, Northrop, any of the primes that are making super critical programs for the future of the country to win Space Race 2, defend Pax Americana and reshore Semiconductor, basically the entire defense industrial base that makes the components for all these primes, whether it's stingers, javelins, satellites, rockets, jets, is basically made up of 5,000 small mom and pop machine shops, which are a holdover from how the defense industrial base got built in the first place. The scary bit is that the average size, they were less than 20 employees, 7 million revenue, and that makes up 90% of the advanced manufacturing volume in the country. Most of them have no succession plan, so when they retire, they don't hand it over to a son or a daughter or sell it to private equity. They sunset the business and lock the door and throw away the keys. And because of this, right now, the space industrial base is completely over capacity and rapidly declining. And it's going to get even worse. So we think we've got about three to seven years before the defense industrial base collapses because these 62 and 63-year-olds are retiring at an ever, ever increasing rate, taking the capacity in the businesses with them. Now, all the machining capacity that serves these primes is about 60 billion, but it's split across 5,000 small businesses. And so it's unbelievably fragmented. And unless we figure out a way to replace this capacity, which is at capacity right now, because it's getting flooded with all these space companies and ramping defense programs, unless we as a country figure out how to replace this capacity, we'll not be able to sustain the existing space and defense programs. Everyone knows we're already several years high, you know, behind on critical deliveries to Taiwan and Ukraine, let alone innovate on new programs from companies like Andrew or all the existing primes. And the defense industrial base that feeds the primes is the number one bottleneck for arms sales in the defense of the country. So basically, we all know we need to arm Ukraine, Taiwan, other regions with asymmetric armaments to prevent CCP and Russian aggression. That's a great thing. But ballistics, small arms programs, fighter jets, submarines, we're all three to five years behind delivery schedules already because the defense industrial base is at capacity. It's only going to get worse. And the simple fact is the primes cannot get enough parts in order to assemble the munitions or hardware at the required rates. You know, so if you're trying to make 500 engines a year, it's pretty hard to hit that rate if you're lying down all the time because you just can't get any inputs into the system. So as the small business owners in the defense sales industrial base retire, the problem's gonna get exponentially worse because people don't retire linearly, they retire exponentially. So Hadrian's mission is to basically reindustrialize America and the way we are doing that is building automated factories for space and defense. So what we are building is a highly automated machine shop factory that is scalable, um, combining the best of Silicon Valley software engineering with training so that we can rapidly scale new workforce capacity and factories into the system so that we can crush this model that can go in the day. What we've built is a system where we can produce flight hardware 10 times faster and 50% cheaper than anybody. And our strategy is that we automate 70% of any of the factory processes and leave the last 30% for humans to do, but massively simplify it. Because one of the things we have to do is aerospace and defense manufacturing is extremely complicated. The average age of a worker in the defense industrial base is 55. There are no new entrants to the workforce. We forgot to make manufacturing sexy. And one of the ways we're doing this is deploying software to make it super simple from someone from like hospitality and retail to ramp into aerospace manufacturing in 30 to 60 days instead of doing like a five to six year apprenticeship. Um, and that standardization basically allows us to have a workforce that's 80% from hospitality and retail or you know places like Home Depot, spin them up within 30 days so that they are running incredibly complex uh, machines and inspection tools that are producing flight hardware for programs like SpaceX, Northrop Grumman, stuff like that. And what that means is that as we rapidly scale our factories across America, not only are we going to be globally competitive in terms of manufacturing costs to replace this volume, we'll be able to create thousands and thousands of high paying jobs as we scale into all the different states. Um, so I'm going to talk, I'm going to go back a sec. So as an example of like how big an existential risk this is, um, if you think about the number of fighter jets that we need to deliver 
stingers and javelins, we've been producing at a rate of like 10% in sustainment mode for like five to 10 years. And that whole defense industrial base has just been, you know, going pretty slowly for like a while. There's no new entrance to the workforce. And what that means is, is when the balloon goes up for the CCP or we need to produce massive amounts of satellites or launch vehicles, there's just no slack or capacity in the system. Um, and if we don't have that capacity, we're in real trouble. And the reason why we won World War II was effectively because we had this incredible, incredible domestic manufacturing base. We we're making cars, consumer electronics, planes. And when the balloon went up, we could point that domestic manufacturing capacity towards defense, you know, in a time frame of like six to 12 months. In the current world, without companies like Hadrian, we have no slack in the system. And if the balloon goes up and we need to increase rate on any of these critical programs, you know, you just think about an F-16, you need to go from making like 100 landing gears to like 1,000 very, very quickly. Right now in the current day, it's completely impossible. We need massive investment in this space and a scalable, scalable factory system. And the combination of automation and training is the only way to get there. And unlike self-driving trucks, for example, where if you automate trucking, you're putting millions and millions of Americans out of work, potentially, because they're of good working age. In the defense industrial base and machining especially, you literally can't go out and hire several thousand people to go spin up new programs or like manufacturing capacity. So building this like automated factory system where training is the key, and we're able to take people in their 20s from hospitality or retail and spin them up into this ecosystem incredibly quickly is basically the only way we have a hope in hell to like scale out billions and billions of industrial capacity to be able to start meeting rate right on some of these really critical programs. And when the balloon goes up and you know we're trying to defend Taiwan or even deterrence strategies, it's the only, only way that we're ever going to be able to have enough capacity in the defense industrial base to like go solve this problem. So it's incredibly scary, it's incredibly large, it's going to require private-public partnerships from both the OEMs, the primes, the government, and venture-backed startups like Hadrian to fix this problem. But it's incredibly important that we recognize that we're not going to be able to do this, win Space Race 2 and defend Pax Americana unless we take a serious look at the defense industrial base and spin up massive amounts of capacity and a new, new workforce incredibly quickly. That's the problem we're here to solve. Um, currently serving a ton of primes in both uh, commercial space and defense. There's a long, long way to go to build the billions of capacity that we need in the ecosystem, be able to hit right on fighter jets, submarines, everything that we need to defend the country. Um, and that's the problem we're here to solve. So I uh, went very quickly through this. So I really appreciate the time, but hopefully that's uh, illuminating of the real problem that we've got in the ecosystem. So thank you and God bless the United States of America.